Hey guys, Adam here. So in today's video, I'm going to share a whole heap of footage that I've never shown anyone before. I captured a lot of stuff whilst I was living in Bougainville, Papua New Guinea for the two years. And here in Timor-Leste, I've recently been going through my old hard drives and re-watching a lot of the footage, starting up in Buka, including Arawa, and then down to uh, Buin. And what I wanted to do in today's video was share a lot of that footage with you and talk about what it means to me and what I was doing at the time. This has been a great video to make. Uh, it's a bit of a um, kind of reminiscing video for me, I guess. And like I said, you know, I really enjoyed watching all the footage. So to make it into a video has just been, yeah, fantastic as well. I'm reliving that Bougainville experience. So let's crack on. Just a heads up that it's probably going to be a little bit longer than my normal video. So maybe settle down, grab yourself a tea or coffee. And if you love Bougainville like myself, then I'm hoping you'll love this video too, so let's get cracking. During the two years that I lived in Bougainville, I probably took six or seven visits to Booker Island, and usually it was a combination of projects that I was working on, photography and video projects, and visiting friends and volunteers that were living in Booker. One of the things that really stands out to me from my visits to Booker was the short but exhilarating boat ride across Booker Passage. It literally takes three minutes from Kokopau over to Booker Island and vice versa, but it was just one of those things that you knew you had arrived in Booker when you did that boat ride. So yeah, you take your PMV, or you get a friend to drive you from Arawa up to Booker, that would maybe take three, four, five hours depending on conditions and the rivers and the bridges and you know, many other factors. But then when you get to Kokopal and you, uh, yeah, you kind of see all those boats lined up there and you, you pick the boat that you want and off you go and then three minutes later you're on Booker Island. So I thought why not share the entire trip across from, this, this clip is from Booker Island back over to Kokopal and uh, yeah, enjoy.
And then when you get off the boat over at Kokopal on Bougainville Island, there would always be a whole heap of PMVs just waiting and you kind of get off the boat and you've got maybe, you know, 15 to 20 PMVs often all piped up and kind of people just looking at you. And it was always quite funny, you'd have to try and kind of look at them all and figure out which ones you knew and which ones you knew were going to go to Arawa. And often, yeah, you'd recognise the drivers also and uh, they would often recognise you and kind of give you a wave and so on. And then you kind of think, okay, this is going great. I've got the boat over, I'm in the PMV and then you just kind of sit there and, and wait. And the drivers would try and get passengers to fill up the PMVs. And yeah, many, many hours just sitting in the back of those PMVs, just waiting for passengers, waiting and praying that people would come and fill up the truck so that we could take off. And very rarely did you get away before kind of one or two o'clock often, even if you got over there by 11 or 12. Yeah, very rarely would you get away any earlier than yeah, lunchtime. So uh, always interesting times and uh, having chats with the drivers and with the other passengers and so on. Um, yeah, very fond memories of uh, traveling there from Kokopal down to Arawa. The one side I wasn't a big fan of was if I was taking a PMV from Arawa up to Kokopal or up to Buka and it was a really early start in the morning, it was like a, a 4, 5 or 6 o'clock start in the morning. You'd hop, it would be dark, you'd hop in the back of the PMV and then they would cruise around town and look for other passengers and all you wanted to do at that time was just sleep and if you've been in the back of a, a a troopy then they're not the most comfy and uh, yeah you kind of find ways that you could sleep up against the window and the road was rough and you kind of just be yeah nodding on and off and then hopping out and uh, toilet breaks and uh, the little market stall breaks and so on but by the time I got to Booker I was exhausted and my body would often feel like real achy for a day or two after just from how rough it was and then yeah, those, like I say, those early morning starts, they're not pleasant and I don't miss those at all. So I often go to the market in Arawa. We had a couple of different markets. So we had the Picus market, which was a smaller one, uh, very close to my house. So I'd often go there on the bike and it would take me two minutes to get there and buy bananas and oranges and uh, passion fruit when they had them. And then you had the big main market in, in the centre of town and I'd, I'd go there probably once a week to stock up and uh, yeah it was just colours, noise and vibrant all the time just it was the centre of town it really was the hub of town and it was nice going there you know my landlord um, she worked there so she knew me and her friends knew me and I guess you know being a white guy in Bougainville you kind of stand out and everyone kind of recognizes you and, and gets to know your story that I was there from New Zealand with the SA and uh, I'd often get to explain what I was doing as well promoting tourism for Bougainville so lots of people would stop and have chats so yeah many many fond memories of going to the market so on the weekends typically I would head out to Lollahol the other volunteers that were in Arawa also and the expats would, um, yeah, it was a favourite place of theirs, you know, Lollahol. For anyone that knows it, it is such a stunning location. Amazing beach and incredible snorkelling. I think probably the best snorkelling I've ever seen is right there at Lollahol and also, yeah, you know, Pok Pok Island that's nearby. Again, incredible snorkelling. But it was not only a beautiful location, but the people were also just, yeah, amazing. So we made friends there with um, the chief and his wife, 
and their family. And so when we went there on the weekends, we'd sit down and we would talk and um, talk about, you know, kind of current affairs and the news and New Zealand and Bougainville. And it was just a really nice experience and um, just such a good way as well to, to spend your time. So yeah, that's one of the places that I really, really miss. And I know many people kind of miss Lola Hall and um, often people will message me and email me and uh, leave comments or photos and videos about Lola Hall. And um, now having been there and experienced Lola Hall for two years, I know exactly why it's um yeah people have that attachment to the place it's just yeah one of those places that's very very special just one of the best places ever. It was so close to where I lived in Arawa and one of my good friends, Bougainvillian friends, uh, Joe, he, um, he was from Pukpuk Island and had all kinds of fantastic connections and he would love to visit the place also. So weekend trips to Pukpuk happened fairly often. I probably went seven or eight times, I think, in the two years. And yeah, it felt like a, a tropical paradise, that place. It was just incredible. So very good accommodation over there that we used to stay in, right at the ocean's edge. And the fishing was amazing. The snorkeling was amazing. Occasionally you would catch very quick glimpses of a dugong or dolphins and uh, yeah, shoals and shoals of fish. And then you had places that were nearby, like Arovo Island, where there used to be a resort that I know lots of people used to go to. 
and we could go over on the boat, it would take maybe 10 or 15 minutes over to Arova, have a look around the old hotel and the old bar and the restaurant and so on, and talk to people that now lived or um, looked after Arova Island. And yeah, it was just lots and lots to do over there. Snorkeling, fishing, stand-up paddle boarding, kayaking, swimming, or just chilling on the beach and taking photos and making videos and hanging out with friends. It was really oh. one of the best places I've yeah. ever been and somewhere I don't think I ever would have got bored of going. It was just an incredible place. Yeah, Puk Puk Island. If you ever go to Bogan, you'll definitely check out Puk Puk Island. And then towards the end of my two years in, in Bougainville, I had an opportunity that came up to go and visit Panguna. So Panguna town and the mine. And it wasn't somewhere I had been previously. It was, yeah, it was kind of an odd feeling that it was so significant in Bougainville's history that I didn't want to push to go and visit it. And I thought if it happens organically, that will be fantastic. If it doesn't, then it would be a, you know, a real shame, but um, it just wasn't meant to be. And towards the end of my time, like I say, then I had an opportunity come up from a local policeman, Bougainvillian policeman, who was going up, he wanted to show me around. And yeah, I kind of jumped at the opportunity and uh, it was just incredible to see, see that place and see, see the mine that, like I say, played such a major part in, in Bougainville's recent history. And then also to talk to people that were living in Panguna and see schools with children and see some of the places that many people that used to live in Bougainville had talked to me about. So the cinema up in Panguna and the swimming pool and the, um, the apartments they used to live in and the factories they used to work in. So to go around and see that was, um, yeah, yeah, really, really quite special. And it felt like the kind of perfect way to end my time in Bougainville, at least for this stint anyway, was getting that opportunity, like I say, organically happening to go and visit such a special place like Panguna. And then this was a short day trip just up to Sibingo, which is just up in the hills outside of Arawa. It was um, Delwyn who owns one of the uh, local guest houses in Arawa. And she's from the area and took us up, myself and uh, my partner Ash and my cousin and his wife. And yeah, she, she wanted to show us around the, um, the area and it was just amazing. Like, you walk down into this river and then across a, a, a tree that was spanning the river and then you go up the kind of steep slippery bank and you find this village where there was these amazing looking houses 
and some of the best gardens I've seen as well, you know, really well maintained and flourishing gardens. Another place you could go on a day trip or a weekend was uh, Pitya, and it was where Mr. Pip was filmed. And so we went over there maybe two or three times in, in the time we were there. And we stayed at one of the guest house there, but then also, yeah, just went for um, yeah, day trips also. And it was just, again, a stunning location, lovely people. They showed us how to make tama tama, um, which was, yeah, quite the unique process and tastes amazing, super sweet, kind of fudge-like. Um, definitely couldn't eat too much of it, but um, yeah, beautiful stuff. And to watch it being made is just, um, yeah, such an insight into, I guess, Bougainville traditions that it just felt like a special moment and you're right there on the beach and there's children playing and uh, kind of surfing on pieces of polystyrene or pieces of wood and um, dogs and chickens and just feels like a bit of a community there and it kind of feels good to be that close and see and get a bit of an insight into that community. And this is a trip that I took with my partner Ash. She, um, she was volunteering for World Vision through VSA and they were delivering cocoa to the, the farmers. And so I joined them on one of the trips and uh, yeah, again, just uh, an amazing day where everyone's kind of grafting and picking up cocoa seedlings from, from the, the grower and then loading it up into the back of the truck and then going off to these places that, again, I didn't know even existed and uh, these little lanes and uh, there they are, kind of communities that are living there and delivering these cocoa seedlings to the farmers. So we were made incredibly welcome as were the, uh, the people that were growing the, the cocoa and it was just, yeah, fascinating to see. And then we get down to Buin. I, I only went down to Buin maybe two or three times in the two years, but um, yeah, I loved it down in Buin. It was just, it felt different to, to Buka and Arawa. Each town, I guess, feels very unique in its own way. You know, Buka's kind of bigger and there's um, more shops and very hustle bustle, very dusty and hot and um, yeah lots of guest house and you're right on the water's edge there at Booker Passage. Arawa felt a lot more mellow, much cooler, um, maybe because it was surrounded by the hills. You had a good kind of wind and the rain would come in and yeah, it felt much cooler, much greener, much more mellow. Still had the shops and the markets and so on, but then you had really great access to the beach and to the snorkeling and to, like I say, Pok Pok Island and Pidia, uh, Pidia, the peninsula. And then down in Buin, it just felt very unique again. It was, um, yeah, the roads were amazing down there. They had new roads throughout the town. So you had signposts, you know, children crossing signposts, which was just very unusual to see in Bougainville. And then much smaller shops and a big market twice a week and then very small markets. And then you would have to drive a little ways to get to the ocean because um, Bowen's kind of set in land. So yeah, you'd have to drive to get to the ocean and to, to the pier. So um, yeah, felt very, very different. But like I say, always enjoyed my time down there, uh, visiting some of the volunteers and some of the expats that were living down there. And this was a boat trip that we took out from Bowen and we did some fishing and some exploring and some snorkeling and yeah, Bougainville is just incredible for that sort of thing, taking boats out to islands and these uninhabited islands where you can just snorkel straight off the shore and it's just incredible and it's clean and it's clear and amazing, yeah. Name belong to Pla Mountain? And Maravita no. Hey Maravita. Maravita. Mm. And then Kango, Kango Beach. Kango, yeah. In okay, the middle. Maravita on top. Maravita yeah. on top. Okay, this is La Tamblo and Ponamas. Ponga. 
Angara. 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 So like I say, it's been great fun for me to go back through all my old footage and share with you all this footage that I captured and I just thought this is too good not to share. So uh, yeah, love making this video, love going back through the footage and reminiscing about my time in Bougainville. I think Bougainville for me is somewhere that yeah, will always have a special place in my heart and I know lots of people feel the same as well. It's, um, there's something about the place that really just kind of pulls you in and it's such a beautiful place. It really is a bit of a tropical paradise and the people, I know it's easy to say, you know, and everyone always says, oh, the people are, are amazing. But um, during my two years though, yeah, I made some fantastic friends in Bougainville and uh, it was just such a great place to be part of for that time and I feel like I will go back there as well. I'm looking for ways to go back there at some point in the future and projects that I can potentially work on. So uh, yeah, watch this space I guess, um, who knows. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I say, it was a bit longer, but um, I hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. If you did, hit the like button, leave a comment and uh, let me know what you thought about Bougainville, about this footage and share your stories share it and uh, remember to hit subscribe and hit the bell also and until next time guys it's been a pleasure as always cheers guys